dear student friend welcome to the problem solving session on z transform in the previous session we have seen some basics now we are going to continue those basics in the part 2 video in session 1 we have seen the formula for z of 1 that is going to be z by z minus 1 then z of a power n is going to be z divided by z minus a if it is z of minus a whole power n it is going to be z by z plus a then we see Z of n. This is nothing but z by z minus one whole square. And finally, we see z of one by n. That is going to be log z by z minus one. In this video, we are going to see what is z of one by n plus one as well as z of one by n minus one. In addition, we are going to see z of one by n factorial. Let us do one by one. Now my f of n is going to be one by n plus one. Expanding this, when I substitute the value of n from zero to infinity, we will be getting like this. One. When I put n equal to one, one plus one two. One by two, one by z. One by three, one by z whole square. One by four, one by z whole cube. Now substitute the value of n from zero to infinity. We will be getting. Like this, we know the formula x by one plus x square by two plus x cube by three, etc. Up to infinity is going to be minus log one minus x. But here I can see my problem as one plus one by z by two. 1 by z whole square by 3, 1 by z whole cube by 4, etc. So now comparing these two formula here, 1 by z is lagging. What I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply and divide by 1 by z in this expression. So now z into the first term will become. 1 by z by 1. Second term will become 1 by z whole square by 2. Third term will become 1 by z whole cube by 3, etc. Therefore, I can apply the formula minus log 1 minus x is equal to x by 1 x square by 2. This is going to be minus log 1 minus 1 by z. Now take this minus to the power. We'll be getting z log z minus 1 by z all power minus 1. Simplifying this, we'll be getting z log <coughs> z by z minus 1. This is the answer. So we found z of 1 by n is simply log z by z minus 1. Here we found z of 1 by n plus 1 is z into log z by z minus 1. I think now you would have guessed what would be the answer for z of 1 divided by n minus 1. It is going to be 1 by z log z by z minus 1. Let us see it. As usual, take the function f of n as 1 by n minus 1. Now it is very important. I cannot put n equal to 0. If I put zero, I'll get the negative value, and also I cannot put n equal to one because it will become infinity. In so one and zero are banned. It is true when n greater than one. It's true from two. Now, now expanding this, we'll be getting one by one, one by z whole square, one by two, one by z whole cube. In the previous problem. It is lacking of one by z, so we multiply and divide one by z. But here, for the first term, square is there, but denominator is one. Cube is there, denominator is two. Four is there, denominator is three. So it has one extra term. So if I take one by z, it will become properly one by z by one, one by z whole square by two, one by z whole cube by three, etc. Now I can immediately apply the formula. It's my Minus log one minus x is x by one x square by two x cube by three etc. Therefore, I'll be getting minus one by z log one minus one by z. Now simplifying this, we'll be getting minus one by z log z minus one by z. Same thing. Take the minus to the power and simplify this. We'll be getting one by z into log z by z minus one. So we have completed all the three formulas. Next, we are going to find z of one by n factorial. Hope you have guessed what the formula I am going to use. Now let us substitute this and then expanding this, we'll be getting one plus one by z by one fact by z whole square by two factorial, etc. It looks like the formula e power x one plus x by one factorial x square by two factorial x cube by three factorial, etc. 
I can directly apply the formula. Therefore, Z of 1 by N factorial is E power 1 by Z. Because in the place of X, we have 1 by Z. This is my answer. Now, this is more than enough. Remaining data we can remember as a formula. Z of 1 by n plus 1 factorial is going to be z into e power 1 by z minus 1. If you need the proof, you can see here and you can pause the video and you can learn from here. Similarly, z of 1 by n plus 2, it is going to be z square log z by z minus 1 minus z. You can just remember this as a formula. And next, we have another MCQ, unit impulse sequence. Unit impulse sequence is very simple. It is going to be 1 when n equal to 0. When n not equal to 0, it is going to be 0. Now, applying in Z transform, the proof is very simple. All the terms are 0 except first term. It is going to be 1. Therefore, summing all this thing, will be getting Z of Kronecker delta n is going to be always 1. And the next formula is also an MCQ, unit step sequence. When n greater than or equal to 0, it is 1. When n less than 0, it is 0. So now, expanding this and substituting the value for 0, it is 1. U of 1, it is 1. U of 2, it is 1. Now we can see 1 plus 1 by z plus 1 by z whole square plus 1 by z whole cube. It looks like z by z minus 1 plus 1 by z plus 1 by z whole square plus 1 by z whole cube etc. And I can use the formula 1 minus x whole power minus 1 that is 1 plus x plus x square etc. Simplifying this, we get z of u of n is going to be z divided by z minus 1. So, just remember all these formulas which we are going to use in inverse Fourier transform. Next, we are going to see some property. A linear property is very obvious. When a and b are constant, z of a into f of n plus or minus b into g of n, it is going to be a times z of f of n plus or minus b into z of g of n. Next, whenever z of f of n is multiplied with a function n, then what would be the answer? We are going to see the formula. If z of f of n, I am taking this as capital F of z, then z of n into f of, it is going to be minus z into differentiation of z of f of n. That I can write it as f of z. Then the next property, first shifting property or frequency shifting property or damping rule. If z of f of n is going to be f of z, then z of a power n into f of n is nothing but z of f of n. In the final answer, we replace z by z by a. That we can directly say it as capital F of Z by A. This is called as this is called as first shifting property. So using these properties, we are going to solve some simple problems in the forthcoming sessions. And finally, we have second shifting property. This we are going to use in solving difference equation. Just note it down for MCQ. This is known as second shifting property or time shifting property. So, we will see the simple problems and some problems using properties in the forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and share to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.